from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Radio 2018. Brought to you by VMware. Hello everyone, welcome to the special CUBE coverage here in San Francisco, California. We're at VMware's Radio 2018 event. This is their annual R&D event where all the best people, smartest people come together to collaborate on new projects, new innovations, not imitation innovations. They had great speakers up there. They had Steve Herod, CUBE alumni, now Venture Capitalist, formerly CTO of VMware. And our first guest here today is Ray O'Farrell, Executive Vice President and CTO of VMware. Been on theCUBE before. Great to see you, thanks for joining us. Yeah, great to see you, good morning. So I love this event because it's like you mentioned before we came on camera, Steve Herod said it's like a sales kickoff for engineers. Correct, yeah. <laughs> yep. Which is like a rah-rah, but also you know, really motivating, but also putting out the North Star, yep. which is the innovation message. Correct. So take a minute to, to talk about what this event is. Take, you know, explain to the folks what is Radio 2018. There's a lot of history involved here. Yep. Behind us is a t-shirt row of you know, key milestones Correct. in VMware yes, history. Yeah. You know, think inside the box, now it's think yep. inside the cloud. Yep. What's, what's this event about? So um, the event has uh, quite a few years. It's got, this is like the 14th year we've done this, right? And um, when it started, what it was really focused on was in some ways a recognition that uh, as the company begins to grow, as you begin to um, build new products and engage in new partnerships, um, in order to keep innovation alive, you almost need to manage it. The problem is you can't manage innovation, almost by, you know, by definition, it's, it's something chaotic, it's an inspirational idea, it's something that was not expected, that's what makes it innovation. But what you can do is you can create a culture which promotes that innovation or creates opportunities for those ideas to emerge or when those ideas to emerge, make sure there's a place for them to be heard and there's a, an opportunity for a network to build around them. And radio is a part of that. We have lots of other programs in VMware to help keep driving that culture of innovation, but radio is probably the premier one. Talk about some of the history from this event. What has come out of the, these events? Because I want to get into some of the, the specific questions around how R&D works these days, vis-a-vis yep. -vis how it used to work. Mm -hmm. uh, but specifically, what has come out of these events? Can you point to any, any things that kind of popped out? Say, you Because know, R&D, I won't say hit or miss, but it's the idea is to, is to experiment and, and try new things and nail it. What has come out of VMware's radio um, years of history? Yeah, so um, very practically, uh, we get a lot of patents out of radio. That's just a very practical sense. As people are building up the papers, as they're looking at um, the ideas they want to drive, as they work with different teams to build prototypes, quite a few times people will do that uh, at radio when they're making a presentation. Um, they'll generate ideas, invention disclosures, which generate new patents. This show alone, um, even though uh, you know, we're just actually entering the show at this stage, has already generated about nearly 240 IDFs. A lot of those have the potential to become patents. So it's very, very practical and pragmatic about the generation of yes. you know, patents and new ideas. When you look at the product side of things, quite often what you see at radio is not necessarily a new product in a whole new area. What you tend to see is we've existing technologies bubbling in different spaces, and now because you're able to bring these teams together, somebody gets an idea that says, oh, I can combine machine learning with what we're doing in terms of logging, and now I've got an interesting product to help support our customers um, You know, deal with real world problems. So it's not take that hill, build me a blockchain product. It's more of take a step back, zoom back, look at the big picture, yep. understand the fusion of where things are you know, coming together. Correct. Look at architecture, is that kind of the? the yeah, um, actually sometimes there is the take that hill, take the blockchain product, but quite often it starts as something small. You have a radio event where somebody will say, blockchain is cool and interesting, here's how you run it in a more efficient fashion on vSphere, something like that. And that will be a poster session. And it's only then when somebody sees that that says, I can really run blockchain on vSphere, can I do it better even than on physical in some way? And that's when the story emerges. So you don't necessarily yeah. see the, the product announcement coming from radio itself. What you see is the core of that idea, and then a few months later, or the next, uh, you know, the next major VM world or two VM worlds out, you begin to see these things emerge. It's like you're, you're creating sparks of innovation, throw that's them onto the fire, create some That's action. That's exactly the way it works. Um, you know, things like uh, a lot of stuff, what we do in containers, you know, the VMware integrated containers, the combination of containers and VMs from a security point of view, you can trace a lot of that back to ideas mm -hmm. that were generated uh, generated for radio. And it's pretty rigorous. Yeah. People have yeah. to go through, yeah. submit papers, there's a submit ideas. Uh, you know, our most senior engineers crawl all over those and critique them. And uh, so, you know, you see. So it's competitive. Oh, it's very competitive and it is, um, 
in many ways, it's a uh, it's it's a mark of uh, it's a mark of honor to be invited to to radio or to present a paper, and so people fight yeah. very hard to do yeah, so. Built-in gamification called "Just Be Smart and Show Some Good Papers." Uh, yes, <laughs> it's uh, it's a little bit tougher. How than much that. goes into the prep for this? Because obviously, that's a great bar. You guys yes, set yeah. a high bar. It's great, yep. um, and it's a great place here for people to stretch and flex their their technical muscle. Yep. What's the, what's the process? How do people get to that bar? Do they collaborate? Is there meetups? Is there organic processes? Is it top down? How do you guys yep. handle it? Um, so we have a lot of different processes or programs around driving innovation, but when you look at radio itself, and it leverages some of those others, but when you look at radio itself, um, basically we create a radio committee. Uh, the one for next year will be starting somewhere in the next couple of weeks, right? We create a radio committee. It is typically driven uh, by members of the office of the CTO, um, but works and pulls in our fellows, our mm. principal engineers, and we form a committee which really splits into two different directions. One of which is all around the technical papers, the presentations which are going to be presented later here today, and another one which focuses around how do you do the keynotes, how do you get invited speakers, how do you create this inspirational, um, you know, uh, pervasive uh, sense of innovation. And so you have those two, um, those two, those two groups working uh, uh, while well, cooperating somewhat independently of each other. And um, it takes a long time. So yeah. for instance, um, approximately, uh, only about 15% of the papers which are actually submitted are presented here. So there's a lot of work going through, scanning those, combining those. Um, one of the most exciting things you can do at VMware is if you go back somewhere in around the February timeframe, all of our most senior engineers sit in one of our largest conference rooms with a bunch of engineers submitting papers and so on. And there is a lively debate working through paper after paper, idea after after idea and saying, is this a good thing for radio? Is this original? Hey, nobody else taught it that. What are we going to be able to do to do that? Or in some cases yeah. saying, these two people, one from Bangalore, one from Bulgaria, we have R&D sites all over the world. These ideas look similar. Could we get those guys to talk to each other? and see what comes out of it. Yeah, that. so it's kind of a team building exercise at the same time, yeah. create that innovation, but it's, a, it's interesting. You mentioned you've got the challenge of the papers, which is be, you know, get the accuracy on the facts, yep. original content, original ideas, Correct. and then the content program for the event yes. has to be inspiring and motivating. Correct, At yes. the same time, two yep. different things, but two design standards yeah. for you guys. Yeah, and you know, we need to combine them both, yeah. and 80% um, to 90% of the people who are here are hardcore R&D engineers. Their day job yeah. is to write code, produce product, architect product, yeah. right? And you know, if you haven't worked with a, a group of senior yes. engineers, yeah. right, they are not going to be tolerant of presentations which, oh, we saw that before. Yeah. Or fluff. Or, or fluff, right? Yeah. They want to get hardcore into the meat. In fact, the presentations that you see that get some of the highest ratings tend to be those that are deeply technical in nature. You know, VMware's software base is primarily system software, systems yeah. engineering. They expect to see you know, deeply technical solutions uh, to how to attack some real world You guys problems. do have some smart people. It's great having the queue. It's our ninth year doing VMworld. Great to start coming into the more technical events. Yep. Uh, it's fantastic. So the question I got to ask for you is Pat Gelsinger always says on the queue, yep. he says on the queue a few times, but, but it's a consistent theme. You got to get out in front of that next wave. Correct. Or your driftwood. To the yep. point of don't just take that point product of view. Correct. Jump on the wave. Yep. And the wave is all about the next 10 years or Correct. 20 years. Correct. What is the way that you guys are, are that you would you could categorize, obviously cloud is, yep. was, is key, yep. but as you have the hyper-convergence and the on-premise yep. private cloud booming, vSAN's great, yep. we've seen great results from that. The cloud's right there, Amazon, yep. Amazon you got Microsoft kicking in butt on the numbers. As the R&D tries not to get caught up into the fashionable you yes. know, day to day, yeah. you got to have the long view. Yeah. What's the way for the long view? So I think there's two ways we look at that. One of them is um, you need to spend a lot of time with customers and understand what their agenda is, what their innovation agenda is. And when you look at that, you see you know, products popping up. How will I leverage AI in a new and interesting way? How will I do something with blockchain? Uh, you know, I want to run AI algorithms. I need different hardware and different management yeah. software to do, to do that. So we focus on those yeah. and make sure we're doing that. But perhaps more importantly, um, I think when you begin to look at what's happening with yeah. the industry right now, you know, you saw private cloud, you saw public cloud, you see how you connect these together. It's actually that connectivity is going to be important. You know, I believe you're going to see the emergence of edge infrastructure, but isolated, that's not powerful. Now combine that edge infrastructure with how you can leverage what's going in in the public cloud, or how you're going to be able to secure all of these in a, in a way that falls back into you know, even telco yeah. in some way. You're now beginning to see the synergy across all of those things. 
And I think you know that's yeah. where our sweet spot is. Yeah. We know how to deal with those hard, how do I connect things together? How do I manage yeah. complex, uh, a different piece of system software? So well, that's where we're going to see it. It's great stuff. One of the benefits of being so close to VM over the past nine years, and, and I was showing you some of our, our uh, online data analysis, when I look at the VMware ecosystem, yep. you interesting to see the evolution yes. of the journey, 14 yeah. years, and looking at the milestones. Clearly infrastructure, yep. on-premise data center, then, and then you saw the emergence of the clouds. You start yep. to see these markets emerge. Cloud, big data comes on the scene. Data warehousing being destroyed. Now yep. that's AI, cloud is bigger. All kind of taking a little bit off the infrastructure, kind of squeezing that down, but it moves up into the cloud. Yep. And now you got over the top, blockchain, cryptocurrency, decentralized applications. Correct. In the middle of these circles, is security, IOT, and data. Correct. You guys are right there, so yep. I have to ask you, because they're all, the confluence of all those are coming together. Yes, yep. You're not a pure play blockchain, although there's some stuff you, we can get into. Yeah, we can talk about You that got too. some AI influencing it. So in the center of infrastructure, cloud, AI, yep. and blockchain, et cetera, is security, data, yes. and IOT. Yeah. And I How think is that coming together? What's the uh, R&D uh, uh, tasks to... Yeah, so actually the key word I think you used there was confluence. It's, um, you cannot really look at these as independent things. And you know, so our focus is what does it mean to be essentially the infrastructure, and the infrastructure management story for that new form of you know, multi-cloud, edge, uh, IOT type of uh, 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 narrative, right? Um, so our role there is, we believe security is one of the key things to focus on, um, and we believe that uh, in that new world, connectivity is a key part of what goes on. The edge must talk to the cloud, the cloud must talk to the telco, the telco must talk to the IoT They device. need power. <laughs> right, they need power, they need communication, they need those things. So a lot of the time, a lot of where we focus comes back to NSX. We do believe that software-defined networking is a key way of being able to deliver a new fluidity of when you get that confluence. And NSX very quickly brings you into security. That's how you begin to understand how you isolate those components, understand what you need to do to detect yeah. when that edge IoT device, device is not even the device you think it is. Somebody might have replaced it. That's where you begin to be able yeah. to see the communications and so, so on from that. So security is key, yeah. interconnectivity is key, and you know, when we speak about IoT itself, um, I, I've got a, a kind of a dual role at VMware. While I'm the CTO of VMware, I also focus on IoT for Dell Technologies. And when we look at that, you know, today many of the examples of IoT are very narrow, um, almost point solutions. The real power will come when you begin to combine across those solutions. You know, the, the thing that tells you the weather, the things that tells you the traffic, and then the thing that tells you, you know, what's the best way to get there in your car, whatever it is. Combine those yeah. things, now you got to secure all that because you're sharing yeah. information. It's super that. exciting. It's, it's probably a great time, best time to be in doing R&D because Dave and Volante and I always talk about on theCUBE all the time yep. that, you know, if everything's cloud operations, because yep. the confluence is happening, yep. what is IoT? Yep. You have a thin edge, could be a Correct. wind farm, traffic signal, sensor yep. network, or it could be a data center. The Correct. data center could be an edge. Yeah. I mean, he can look at it anyway, it depends on how you look at it. Correct. Um, one of the biggest questions that comes up over all the time is what exactly is the edge, right? And um, I think you know, it means different things to different industries. It's very clear on the extreme edge. That's a device, it's a wind farm, it's you know, measuring the behavior of a robot or something like that. And it's very clear on the other side. That's a cloud, I run a bunch of yeah. analytics over there. It's the interesting piece in the middle where there's both you know, a lot of opportunity and a lot of even difficulty defining it. Yeah. Uh, you know, are, is the SD-WAN server inside in an office, is that edge? Yeah, that looks like edge, it's at the edge of the network, but it's not controlling something physical. But that SD-WAN server yeah. inside in a retail store may well also be doing something with you know, the refrigerators or the cold chain or something in that store. And now you begin to see yeah. it more as kind of an IoT device. It's awesome, it's a great conversation. Certainly fodder for more R&D and yeah. more innovation and, and the management side's key. And again, the holy grail in all this is programmable networks. <laughs> right? Correct. Come on, yeah. when waiting, how yeah. fast is that coming? Yes. Pedal yeah. harder, come on. Yeah. Uh, I know you got to go, thanks for coming on. Sure. But I do want to ask you guys are, we'll give you some props and just get your thoughts on obviously yeah. blockchain. We see things like Filecoin had a very huge ICO on the hype side, yeah, yeah. but you know, they really didn't have a problem but they're promising, promising, hey, store using decentralized bandwidth blockchain. Yep. Obviously it's a network, yep. storage, infrastructure, it's not so much you know, yep. selling tokens with token economics, although yep. it does have a piece of it. That's going to impact you guys on the horizon. What's the, what's the current state of, of you guys' view, your view, your, the team's view of blockchain? Of blockchain? Impact? Yeah, yeah um, I mean obviously a lot of the hype and even some of the valuations and things you see are tied to what's happening you know, on the financial side, Bitcoin and so on. Um, we're not focused on that at all. 
What we're saying is blockchain, or more specifically, a distributed hyperledger, forms the basis of a community of companies or organizations being able to essentially look at trust as a service. I've got a contract with you, we're now able to look across a group of companies to say, yeah. we all agree that contract is, is valid because of our leverage of this blockchain. That is a, um, you know, that, is a, that then becomes an application story. How do I run it more efficiently? How do I make sure I run it securely? How do I make sure that that community is able to leverage that service in a shared fashion? And that's what we're focused on. In fact, one of the more interesting things is when you look at things like blockchain, when it's used in the context of something like Bitcoin, there's a degree what people value is anon anonymity. We don't know who bought it, but somebody bought it. But when you look at from a trust point of view, we actually want to be able to see who exactly did the contract. I agree yeah. that you've put the contract, we've worked this contract together, and we're all agreeing with that. So you see these changes when you begin to bring these technology yeah. into enterprise. Efficiencies come big Correct. time on supply chain. Exactly, and actually we've put a lot of focus on efficiencies. Um, we've got a research team whose, whose job has been very focused on Given blockchain, how do I improve the core algorithms? How do I make them more applicable to something that be run by a typical enterprise or by a group of enterprises? And you know that's a little bit unusual for us because we're entering a kind of an application space. But what's good about this application space, it is hard systems engineering. And that's what we know how to do. And that's why yeah. we think this is a great application space for us to be able to deliver real value. And the key word is engineering. You also mentioned earlier, community. Yep. Open source has brought this community dynamic Correct. together where there's no middlemen. Yep. This is the beautiful thing of the future of Correct. infrastructure. How do you manage it? How do you make it secure? Trust as a service. Yes. You guys are doing a great job. Based on our data, you are on the ecosystem, you guys have all the waves covered. Okay. Ray, thanks for coming on. Great, thank appreciate you very the much. Conversation. I'm John Furrier here in San Francisco for VMware's Radio 2018, 14th year of their annual engineering kickoff, motivation, hardcore engineering critique, and also collaboration with the sparks of innovation are happening. Be right back with more. Thanks for watching.